Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to day number two, EAA Air Venture Oshkosh 2025. We are happy that you are here. If you're returning, welcome back to Oshkosh. If it is your first time, welcome. Welcome to Oshkosh. Try not to get your tonsils sunburned today looking up into the sky with your mouth agape at what you are about to see. And the one and only Rob Lowe. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Steve, I have no idea what's going to get burned today, but I'm excited. It's not raining. That's bad. Hey, Martin, just wanted to let you know that this thing with Ralph Stedman on it is flying today, Friday, and Saturday here. Check that out. Get all the people looking at your airplane. I think there's a real transition that's happening here that's that's pretty interesting. I heard someone once say that what makes a real airplane is um, if it flew out to Oshkosh, Wisconsin, which is this big air show out in, um, out in Wisconsin. And, and what they meant by that wasn't that that air show was particularly special or anything like that. What they meant was that when an airplane's able to go cross country on a given date at a given time um, to a given place, that means that it's a real airplane. Beta one, boss. Beta one. Beta one, the airspace engineer. Beta one. The EAA was my introduction to aviation, and the association is alive and well in Vermont. Once a year for a week, everybody who loves airplanes gets together in one spot. Oshkosh is for the enthusiasts. It's for general aviation lovers. I think uh, it'll be really exciting for people to see that it's real and that it's flying and it didn't get shipped in, in a crate. I, I really wanted to go to Oshkosh this year, um, but then all of a sudden out of nowhere, Jerry calls and says, hey, do you want to fly the A-Star out as part of the camera crew and go to Oshkosh? Well, that solved that problem. Pretty fun way to wake up, huh? Steaming hot. All this and coffee, too? Woo! Today, I think we should practice that, too. You have to stay to be east of the 500 foot line, cat free airplane. You need that 500 foot oh, separation. You, you can't. That, that's, this is the edge of the box. That's the edge of the box. One of the more the exciting box, things like about Oshkosh for us this year is we get to fly in the air show three times. And we do that in a very tight box right in front of hundreds of thousands of people. Precision flying in front of that many people with an aircraft that people in this building created is a pretty big high. And we got to do it right. We've been training on the weekends here. We've been training with the film crew. We've been training with the ground crew, making sure that we pull it off perfectly in front of this crowd. Oh, how do you think it looked? Same. Yeah. They're all aviators and they're going to see every single mistake. Kyle, those heights from the ground look good. Yeah. It's not like Our aircraft is utility aircraft. It's a beautiful, smooth, slippery aircraft. You're really trying to exploit the, the elegance of the aircraft. So every move is done smoothly and precisely. The apex of the climb has to happen right at 700 feet. You bring it around at 90 knots. You let it accelerate. You're slowly rolling the throttle in as you come down to the apex of the belly shot, where you show the crowd the underside of the aircraft, doing 130 knots on the nose at 200 feet. It's a beautiful, smooth, efficient electric airplane. So the flying has to reflect the form and the essence of the aircraft. We decided if we're going to show up with an airplane to an, to an air show, we're going to fly it there. And this year we're flying two. Going to Oshkosh, man. I get that way. I never in a million years thought I would be flying an electric airplane to Oshkosh. That's six like Romeo, still looking for traffic. One of the best things about it is showing up to all these little airports between Vermont and Oshkosh and meeting all the people. As you get closer and closer and closer to the airport, people are asking, like, oh, you're going to, to go to Oshkosh? 
We are. You should come and see us. We've got uh, two planes that are going to be there. One of them flying in the air shop. I'll talk to my wife. <laughs> We're uh, within two legs of Oshkosh. And we're meeting up with our friends Six Lima Foxtrot and flying form up the Chicago skyline. What a nice way to wake up in the morning and fly the Chicago skyline. You can just shoot up the coastline via far. So we got two views of the skyline that morning. Everybody likes to ask me that. What got you into aviation? What was the time that you realized that you wanted to make aviation a career? I don't really know because I don't remember a time that I didn't want to be in aviation, so it's kind of hard to remember when I had that revelation. I, I think flying aerobatics makes you a better pilot. I mean, the airplane's free to move about all three axes, so if you can't control it about all those axes, then I don't understand how you could consider yourself a fully proficient pilot. It's not to say that you're bad if you're not proficient in aerobatics, but I would tend to say that most people that are self-actualized pilots are probably going to seek out that type of training. Sure, but what else do you do? Oh, 3,500, is that okay? Okay, I'll go, I'll go up to 3,500, I'll head for sandwich. The more experience you have in weird airplanes, the better you are. Like, you can just jump in anything and start it up. It's like an exceptional amount added to your skill set. Jarrett's the owner of Gambit Aviation. He literally started a company just so he could share the things that he enjoys doing, aerobatics and warbirds. I mean, a real tumble is to the left because you're using gyroscopic precession, but if you do it to the right and you outside snap it, yeah. it'll resemble a tumble that feels tighter. We'll do it both ways, you'll see. <laughs> you know, I got my first job here at the airport when I was 14 and just climbed the ladder and I got my first like aerobatic job giving rides and saw how the business worked, and I was like, I can't stop doing this. It's only four times, so. I had to figure out some way to keep it going, and the best way was start a flight school. It was the outlet to keep flying cool things and share it with other people. SNJ5C, 1943 on the USS Coral Sea. Beta has a flight program because how are you going to build an airplane if you have a bunch of people that don't understand the reason that they're building an airplane? It's not about you, it's about these things. I'm 20 years old, uh, about to turn 21 in August. We're gonna fly this airplane in a couple of demos uh, at Oshkosh, um, and we're also gonna fly in and out from Appleton each day. An amazing opportunity for me, especially at my age. We are here at Aurora filming with Gambit Aviation. It's the perfect contrast of, of what's so great about aviation in, in the 30s and 40s, and then what's so great about aviation right now, about 100 years later. Uh, the fundamentals stay the same, and, and that's kind of, that's one of the things we built the company on, and built the airplane around. It's a real pilot's aircraft. Um, I have just as much fun flying this as I do a, a T6. Um, and that's really because I can feel everything I'm doing. I'm totally in control, and, and you really feel like you're flying. Get to check out Gambit and see these guys fly acro and, and join in with them is just spectacular. I never thought in my life that I'd be here. My mom was a huge role model for me. She became a, an airline pilot, and she spent her time flying all sorts of cool things, DC-3s and 747s, and uh, she's always been an inspiration to me as, you know, a really powerful female aviator. Who doesn't want to be that? There's nobody like you guys. Every single one of you has 
no ego, total humility, and it's not for you, it's for everyone else, which is a rare thing to find. We're here at sunrise and we're probably gonna be here at sunset. And uh, I'm putting an A star to bed. Tomorrow we're gonna go to Appleton, to uh, Oshkosh. Uh, it's uh, it's it's kind of hard for me to even put that into words because uh, like it's it's a privilege. Yeah. We're on our way to Oshkosh. We can't wait to get there. Bob Super Jealous. Oshkosh is a playground for aviators. It's uh, it's the culmination of like passion and airplanes and meeting new people and seeing cool things and really embracing what it means to be a pilot and a fan of aircraft. Air Force Cat. Here. Flight is out here. Here. F-25. Here. Gary. Here. Back. Here. Beta. Here. We can, we can either do a ground start or an air start. Heard the airborne before the C-17. Do you want to hold? Yeah, we can hold. It is amazing. So I mean, these are the best air show here. performers yeah. in the yeah. world. Yeah. And we get to go fly our machine alongside them. That's what we're going to watch uh, in uh, T-plus five minutes here for the air show. OK, the electric guards across from my diner. We got a slot right after the C-17. Caution wake turbulence. The electric uh, Roman 9 are clear for takeoff. That's the left that one. Crazy that we had a sketch on a piece of paper, and now we're flying our airplane here at Oshkosh. That bus man, electric is beta one is up in the hole. One more turn and we're ready. OK, set yourself up. Uh, going to be bringing it in right after that one. Roger. How fun for Kyle right now, CEO, owner, bringing it here to Oshkosh. Experimental aviation has always been the bleeding and the cutting edge of aviation, where new ideas are formed and brought to life. And EAA is the pinnacle of that. It's where it all comes together. Pretty amazing. You've got all these various experimental aircraft here at Oshkosh. We're hopefully showing the future of aviation. I love people react when they see the airplane. I feel really privileged to fly with the people I'm flying with and in the aircraft I'm flying. Everything that we have for airplanes, even airplanes rolling off assembly lines today, it's, it's all based on technology that's 40, 50, 60 years old. So to create a new form of propulsion, that is changing things, that is improving things. Beta one last pass. Yeah, outstanding performance. I think that's a really interesting and really significant transition for the aircraft. It means it's actually shifting to an aircraft that can take things places instead of being a test asset that's limited to one area. And that's a that's a massive step forward, I think, both for us, for the Alia aircraft, and then broadly for electric aviation in general. In the air there is Chris Caputo, call sign Pooter. He's a former F-16 and A-10 driver. If, if you're noticing, I, I don't have a lot of good philosophical answers for you. Last <laughs> chicken shuttle? <laughs>
Tommy, you're good for going upside down, right? It's just if we do a loop out there, it's a lot of juice for a long time. I'm so confident I'm not even bringing a food bag. So I had to hit that to talk to you. The train's been on the radio, you press the red one. Got it. What's up with the glasses? The glasses? Whoa, cool, right? Those are wild. I said, eat. It's delicious. like a cherry pie. You can hear emoji means eating. Just as sweet as you can be. I think the blimps were the surprise for me. Blimps doing aerobatics. Yes, sir. It's delicious. <laughs>